Brothers and sisters, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna go over the tier list of the best decks for Bologna. So, just to make this straight and clear, it's not Bologna, it's not Bologna, it's not, it's not Bologna, Bologna, it's Bologna. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. My brothers and sisters, and it's gonna be in Italy and it's gonna be amazing, fantastic. It's actually some good food this time. Okay? Just saying. Just saying. Mwah. Shout out to my fellow companion, Diego, who made this amazing tier list for me. Thank you, Diego. Mwah. First of all, I mean, I don't know why we have to start with that, but like, it's Marines. So, Marines is... Is. Um, a deck for the side events. Uh, amazing decklist for the side events, maybe not, uh, but like, you know. Another deck, uh, in my opinion, is actually underrated, uh, it's Flander. Flander is, um, Flander is a deck that actually is doing well recently uh, in the TCG, and like, it actually topped several events. Uh, you don't see people talking about Flanderies because, like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna post a Flanderis decklist. What the fuck am I gonna talk about? How the deck floodgated living shit out of his opponent in order to win an event or in order to top the event? Obviously not. So, the Flanderis deck is not under the radar. Uh, if, you, if you guys go on YouTube and you search for, you know, topping list or meta discussion, you're not gonna see YouTubers talking about Flanderis because, uh, you know, like, in order to create some content, you need to talk about some stuff. But like, what am I gonna talk about if I show a Flanderis deck? But the deck is doing well. Uh, so, no matter what, no matter how I feel about the deck, no matter how I deeply hate the deck, no matter how that, like, this deck raised my blood pressure, People are cooking with it. So, if people are cooking, I have to not be biased and I have to put it in cooking. Draco Slayer. Draco Slayer is a deck that, when goes first, as any good Pendulum deck, FTKs the opponent. So there is nothing to complain about the deck that FTKs the opponent. The issue is the going second strategy that's super, like, exploitable it's it's not it's not good at all um pendulum decks need to commit too many cards in order uh, to win a game going second or and there are several choke points uh in which you can stop your opponents and if you're gonna see this deck it's gonna be during the side bets. Matt Mac. Matmec with circular at one is something that I wouldn't even uh, take in consideration. But like, is it horrible? No, it's not. Uh, there are different versions that like you can play with the Matmec engine because all you need as a bridge are to level four in order to go into all inversion. And there are several pile decks that utilize this uh, super engine uh, in order to make it broken. We saw, like, for example, Ignister utilizing this. And it's not horrible as a super engine. As a deck, though, it has several issues. So uh, I'm just gonna put it as mid as a super engine, side events as a full mat mat deck. In this case, we are talking about Matmec as a deck on his own. Side events. Scareclaw. Uh, Scareclaw pure, obviously, it's unplayable. Scareclaw Manadium, it's obviously super playable. So, if you're gonna see a pure Scareclaw, and the strategy right now is actually like not fantastic, especially because of SP. If I see someone playing Scareclaw, I'm gonna think that the guy is a paid actor. Virtual world. My brothers and sisters, imagine putting a tombstone of a deck after the release of SP Little Night. It's like, it's not unplayable. 
it is way more than unplayable. If someone can pass me the term in order to describe how virtual world is bad right now, you know what I'm actually gonna say. A straw to farly, a uh, baseline, bleachers, bold, clay, courted, creased, benched, boxed, dead, rebounded, spinned, top spinned, underarmed. This explains how virtual world is right now. And if I win, like, and if I see someone on virtual world, it's gonna be a paid actor. Dragon Link. I love this deck. Um, I think... I think Dragon Link is still playable. Um, I think that if you're gonna play Dragon Link, if you wanna actually utilize the full power of Dragon Link, and you want also to create a perfect circulation in between the engines uh, to regain are actually needed right now, I don't underestimate the power of the deck. Uh, you can play it control, you can play it mid-range, you can play it full combo. I mean, it's gonna be mid-range or full combo, it's not control. If you don't wanna make seal, because otherwise it's gonna be bestial control, which is actually different than actual Dragon Link. So it can be bestial control, can be Dragon Link mid-range, or can be Dragon Link full power. Uh, I think the mid-range version right now is the one that has, the, the, has more, the most chances to be competitive. I think that Dragon Link right now is top mid, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna give it a shot because I actually see a lot of potential for the deck. There are also some hidden combos that people don't show about Dragon Link. And now you can utilize cards like Bitcop in order to gain the full potential of a simple seal because you can make Bitcop with two dark monsters and you can tribute the seal on your board in order to bring the missing piece on the board, but that line in Sintoni Biru. But sometimes I think it's actually necessary to in Sintoni Biru. Um, the um, SP Little Knight is a huge issue for the deck. In my opinion, it's mid, but I want to put it in bottom cooking because I think you need to be cooking if you want to actually top with this deck. So just saying that even though I know this deck is mid, I think I want to put it in bottom cooking. I think it has the potential of actually doing well, especially in Bologna. Earth Machine. Earth Machine is the fan favorite at the end, right? Like, how many people played Earth Machine? Uh, how many people like the, the Gundam combos, okay? But, like, if you are playing this deck, especially at a competitive event, you are a paid actor. Plunder Patrol. Uh, Plunder Patrol. There are some versions, actually, that topped. I don't want to discredit, discredit the people that actually did well with the Pan Plunder Patrol runic. Um, but at the end of the day, if I have to be real with you guys, even though it has tops, actually, and it, and it, it did well than other decks that I consider in the eight years that are in basically cooking, uh, that, that is basically cooking, I consider this deck, this deck is lacking in multiple things. In the recovery, if they break your board, how do you re rebuild it? Going second, if you don't play enough board breakers, and in an entrap meta, this deck feels mid. So, if I'm saying, to be honest, if I'm seeing this deck, even though it actually did well, I know. That's kind of conflictual of the fact that I'm putting this card in the side events. Even though it did well, I I just don't think it's good. I think it's trap tricks, side events, Mikanko. Uh, Mikanko, we saw we saw actually add cooking at the OSS with Mikanko. There were actually several tops with the deck. 
The deck is a glass cannon deck, but it has also potential going second because the Mechancore cards are actually good going second. Uh, the combo can be still improved. Um, I made also a version of the combo. It's fine, but it's not perfect yet. I think I would put it in mid. Even though, again, it has more tops than Dragon Link, but like I see more potential in Dragon Link than in Mikanko. I know, I sound crazy right now, but like, I tested both. Like, one definitely like feels better than the other, and I can play both at the same level. Uh, Sprite 3 Brigade. Uh, Sprite 3 Brigade is interesting. It's an approach that the OCG... I tried for months, actually, during a meta that was similar to this, but without Centurion, I guess. Uh, and we're gonna have Centurion in Bologna. So it's like, how do I feel about Sprite Tri Brigade? The deck, uh, unfortunately, has limited pushes. I think the Sprite engine can actually abuse of SP Little Knight. And this deck can also abuse of SP Little Knight. I don't think it's bad. Um, but so because of, of the fact that I don't see it bad, it's, it has some potential, but the fact that it has limited pushes makes me wonder about how well this deck can actually do. And this leads me to the conclusion to put this deck in mid. Rika San Avalon. <laughs> it's like broken, bro, broken. Okay, I'll tell you that. Actually, no. Okay. Rika San Avalon. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. I'm actually tired of this. How many times we never consider this deck? It comes out of nowhere, takes the lead, and wins an event. It happened already three times. And two of them are Europeans. Like European Championship. Like it's it's actually stupid how this deck did well in the TCG, even though, like, it's not supposed to do this, bro, like, it's not supposed to be so good. It, it is not supposed to be, like, this blows my mind. Like, every time I have, like, every time I forgot, I forget about the effect of those cards, then the deck tops or wins an event, I have to restudy the lines, and then I, then I don't, like, I don't test the deck for, three, four months again, and then this deck tops again. I, to be honest, I just don't know where to put it. Like, in my opinion, the deck is mean. Like, actually, in my opinion, the deck is mean. But it, if, if, if it wins again, like, I think I, I think I will have to... I don't know, like, restart from zero everything. Like, I think I will have to, like, just reset my brain over this deck. How's I don't know how to feel about this deck. I will let my chat decide. So, chat, I will let you decide about the placement of this deck because I don't want to take accountability. My viewers love to cook plants. But remember, we can always smoke plants anyways. At the end of the day, we're going to put it in the bottom cookie. Naturia Runic. Uh, Naturia Runic is when you go to a circus and you see um, someone rolling the bolts, you know, like, that's that's Naturia Runic. Uh, Sword Soul. Sword Soul is super good. Sword Soul is amazing. Sword Soul is fantastic. In the side events. Uh, anyways, uh, Tier Elements. Uh, tier Elements is something that I actually tested. Mm, there are... Uh, Three main choice for the for the for the tier elements engine. Uh, so uh, tier elements is you can you can play it with Nibiru in the main deck, with Nibiru and Super Poly, or with non engine at all. Uh, I tested it a lot. The going second is very good against some specific decks. It's very bad against others, and it's not uh, consistently reliable, which makes me lead. That's gonna be mid. Tyrament Horus. Tyrament Horus is something that I actually tested. Uh, I, I'm in love with the Horus engine in Tier Elements because it fixes some issues of the deck to give him more grind. Um, and the Horus engine, if you can... Uh, 
uh, just like the, the Aorus engine kind of punishes your opponent for overcommitting and gives you a very good grind as well. Uh, I think it's superior uh, than the version without the Aorus. Uh, I tested both and it felt superior in my opinion. But it's still mid at the end of the day. Uh, Gold Pride Punk. Uh, Gold Pride Punk is another amazing, fantastic, superb deck. In the side events, uh, Sprite Melfi. Uh, Sprite Melfi, like the Sprite engine actually doesn't feel uh, um, so bad. Because the Sprite engine can actually like push through boards. Uh, um, and with SP Little Knight feels so much better. But again, like it's the same deck as months ago, except for, I guess, a Spilito Knight, which makes the deck actually way better uh, going second uh, in the uh, and also in the main phase two. In the main phase two, Sprite like feels just amazing. And also if you end up Sprite, it's like you are end looping yourself. Uh, the amount of breaks didn't change, but it's like it feels super mid. I think the sprite engine themselves are mid. So the sprite engine, like for example, sprite Melfi, sprite runic for air, even though the runic, like even though the runic version is worse against Unchained, I would still put it in mid because the combo is super powerful going first. And the DSP Little Knight actually gives the deck like some amazing options. I don't feel like putting it like in the other slots. I think the sprite engine in itself uh, is mid right now. Uh, branded Chimera. Uh, branded Chimera, when it goes first, uh, uh, it's, it's superb, right? Like it's very good um going second uh, like again playing a deck that can only utilize one strategy is weird i saw this mixed with several engines as well i saw it with Horus stuff um i saw it with uh, uh with like i i saw it i saw it with branded but it, it's it's not something that i would co consider uh, in the highest tables uh, it actually topped uh, a few events um, but the engine in itself has, has some some problem to be honest so it's like it's like even though i highly consider uh, fusion decks um, this one it, like, and after the release of the new fusion might be cooking might be cooking or might be top mid definitely not higher than this uh the, the deck has some like some big issues also i saw people uh, start cutting the uh dragoon which makes it even weaker against ash blossom it has it has some like big issues to be honest the the the, the, the only difference in between this and the branded deck like the pure branded deck is the fact that the version of Chimera can play way more entraps and in a format that's uh, that 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 build, that build itself around entraps, the, the Chimera version is definitely better than the pure branded version. And in my opinion, right now, branded Chimera is the upper end uh, because it can play a lot of entraps. And also can play Ferry, and in my opinion, Ferry is a broken right now. I'm gonna put it in cooking. But like, I I'm not really sure about this. Uh, Adventurer Synchron is a glass cannon, right? Like, it's like Draco Slayer. Side events, uh, Runic, Sprite, Evil Twin is probably the worst version of the, of the sprites, in my opinion loses to several things uh loses to bestial that are also sided cause of labyrinth uh dragon link loses to dragon link um even though i consider the sprite engine in itself a 
a very mid like a, a, a good and mid uh, the super engine Duronic Sprite Evil Twin give, gives me like some concerns uh, like it's just because of the Sprite I would probably put it in mid the Fur Iron is definitely the best version of the deck then there is the Tri Brigade, then there is the Melfi, in my opinion. You can mix Tri Brigade also with the Oro stuff, and in my opinion, it's good. The Evil Twin is probably the worst version that you can play. Um, I really dislike this version of the deck, and it's probably like just the worst one at all. But because of the Sprite Super Power Engine, that in my opinion is mid by default, I'm just gonna put the deck in mid. Snake Eyes, uh, Snake Eyes, it's just like, it's actually unplayable. Uh, it's actually unplayable. I was ignorant about the archetype in my last uh, tier list, uh, but this time I fixed my ignorance. Uh, I theorized a little bit over it, uh, and it's actually unplayable. Like, actually unplayable. Like, it's even worse than Paid Actor. I need a new section for this. Altergeist, Altergeist, Altergeist is a combo that did not believe in itself enough. I mean, mid-range, I guess. Mid-range that did not believe in itself enough. It tries to be good, but like, it's never good. Infernoble, uh, Infernoble is... You guys are gonna hate me for Infernoble. You, uh, you guys are actually gonna hate me for Infernoble. I tested the deck. Going first, uh, it's an auto win, right? I think Infernoble is an auto win. Is an auto win when you go first. Uh, you can actually play through different end traps. There are some lines that you can play around the draw as well. Um, some like you actually need to have a very good knowledge of the deck in order to perform with this deck. Uh, there are some rulings that need like. There are some rulings that also needs to be clarified, but like it's not about clarified. It's like if we talk about Angelling, like it's actually interesting to talk about this. Uh, you cannot equip Angelling if your Charles does not have an equip already, and that's that's you guys should take notes about this. I mean, it's it's important actually as a ruling. Uh, like if your if your opponent charts does not have already an equip, they cannot equip uh, uh, the uh, angel ring. It's super import. It's a super important ruling that you guys might need for the future. So take notes on that. Um, you you can also not equip cards to the charts that don't fulfill the activation requirement. It's not like you can equip all the equips from the deck no they need to, like they need to match the activation requirement in order to be equipped going second i found myself struggling a lot with this deck like actually struggling like i feel like against a player that knows what your deck does like even ag like against an unchained against the rescue ace against even a purely I think it's actually impossible to win. Like, I feel like it's impossible. It's like, it's, it's not about, like, I actually feel it's impossible. Like, if your opponent ashes your field spell, you cannot special summon from the spell and trap zone. Uh, if your opponent chains to the activation of a card that targets um, your Angelica, you cannot use Angelica. Because Angelica needs to be directly chained to the cards that target it. I think if you play against... like I think it was a good call uh, for the event that Pac played because no one knew what the deck was doing. But, but in my opinion, after people started studying the choke point of this deck, it became so worse that putting him in cookie putting it in cooking makes no sense i'm actually not joking i think this deck is made 
I think it's impossible to win going second. Like, actually impossible. The deck requires so much board presence and an overcommitment in order to perform. Going first, you cannot win. You cannot, no, sorry. Going first, you cannot lose. My bad. Going first, you cannot lose. Going second, against someone that actually knows how to stop your deck, like stopping the field spell to add, or the chain to the Angelica when it gets targeted. I don't think you can win, ever. I mean, the same issues applies to Rika. Like, I should move Rika down and Infernoble down for the same reason. But Rika overperformed as Infernoble also overperformed. So you know what? I'm going to go against my own concern and I'm just going to put bot in cooking. But like, I'll be real with you guys. I don't think Infernoble is good. That's it. I'm going to put it in cooking, but like, I have to respect the... Um, the results of both the decks in this case specifically. It's not about Mikanko. Mikanko did some well, but not as good as Infernoble and Rika. So I will have, since I put Rika in cooking, I will have to put also Infernoble in cooking. I don't think both should be in cooking, but like, but like I need to be true with my. Uh, uh, with my decisions like I need to match my decisions of a deck uh, uh, like applying the same like uh, applying the same logic to other decks as well let me know what you think about those decks actually in the comment below because I'm actually very curious about how the community uh, is thinking about those decks uh, the Abella Star Rescue is uh, bottom broken bottom broken actually um, I don't think it's actually the best choice uh, I think the deck is broken, but like bottom broken, if that makes sense. It's probably the worst in between um, Unchained and Purely. I think, uh, but yeah, like, it's probably the worst option, if that makes sense. Like, in between the broken decks, it's probably the worst option. Fuck Flander. Bottom cookie. Fuck you, Flander. <laughs> Anyways, Super Eevee, no need to talk about that, Branded Despia, uh, in a format that's uh, heavily reliable about hand traps or needs a mix in between those two, in my opinion Branded is unplayable, uh, even though Super Poly is very good right now, even though Super Poly is very good, the better version of the Fusion deck right now is Branded Chimera. I think Branded Despia in a format that can play board breakers is highly superior than the Branded Chimera, but in a, in a format that requires end traps or a mix in between board breakers and end traps like this one, Branded Despia is super problematic to play mid. Dino DNA, I love this deck. I played it so much and it's fantastic. It's awesome for the side events. Um, probably here. Nouvelle. I mean, come on, bro. Like, if, you are, if we are not cooking with Nouvelle, how are we supposed to be cooking? It's for Master Duel, right? Like, you run the event on Master Duel and you play Noel. Or they need to put, like, some bands in your pocket in order for you to play Noel at a competitive event. Banky Soul. Uh, Banky Soul, uh, in an entrap format, actually doesn't feel bad. I think the deck... Is actually is actually not horrible. And right now 
it's even better than Despia. Someone in my chat is arguing that Banky Soul has more tops than Dragon Link. Um, the difference is Dragon Link with six cards can break any board. Banky Soul with 20 cards always does the same shit. But like with the addition of the trap and the new like the new Banky Soul, the deck actually is good. I actually don't dislike it anymore. It's super breaky. By the way, it's actually super breaky. Like, he, like if you don't open Raisin, um, it's still super problematic. Uh, do I like Banky Soul? Fuck no. Rather than playing Banky Soul, I would rather log on my Valorant account, go in a custom mode, take a knife! Try to win my speedrun ban from Twitch. In a game, obviously. Welcome back. So I'm sorry to interrupt the video, but this is worth it. Let me tell you why. Because this Black Friday is gonna have a 20% discount on Sleeve Cheap product, plus a 5% more using the code GOOD5 to purchase all Sleeve Cheap product. What are we talking about? Look at those amazing sleeves. Oh my god! Yeah. So, there we go. The new deck boxes. Check this out. Also, the pack X Sleeve Chief Collection. And to be honest, you should definitely purchase the only for this Black Friday, my brothers and sisters, 25% on all Sleeve Chief product and 5% more for Goo 5. Don't miss this opportunity. See ya. Purely. Purely um, is, is nice, right? Like right now, to be honest, I have been testing the version with the Ghost Trick, but I'm not playing the full Ghost Trick package. I'm playing just the two Ghost Trick spells, like the um, the shots, the two shots. I think the shots are actually very good for uh, the deck, even though I actually hate to admit it, but like, it's like I have to admit it. The OCG surpassed us. I mean, we had Naturia Runic, they, and now they had... Like, they didn't know about the existence of the Naturia Runic, which was broken in the TCG, but was not existent at all in the OCG. But this time, they surpassed us with Purely. That does not have to happen again, my brothers and sisters. We need to surpass them in every possible shape of deck building and theory. Okay? In my opinion, the Ghost Trick engine gives some amazing pushes to the deck and makes the deck more flexible going second in order to push through harder boards with multiple negations or interruptions. And that's it. Like, it's actually, in my opinion, broken. Uh, Salaman Great. Um, it was losing 20 Biru token. It still loses 20 Biru token. Uh, the main difference is the fact that now they can play three goals and match three rivalry going first, uh, and they can give you a Salaman Great monster in order to lock you out of the game. So when they go first, uh, they usually win like that. The issue is this strategy, especially... Like, such a strategy is only good in the side events. Exosister. Exosister, uh, at the end of the day, if we're going to talk about Exosister, Exosister as an European, um, it was always hard for me to understand the American culture and how Exosister would be able to talk. 
And what was fascinating to me is that they like uh, bragging about their freedom, which was weird for me because I didn't think that I have any less freedom than them or any other deck that would top, right? I always thought, what's the difference? However, however after Exosister won uh, the NA uh, Wises, uh, I finally understood it. And it's just that free. So, uh, Exorcist, like, as Rika San Avalon is very good in the TCG, Exorcist that is, like, amazing in NA. But, like, I would see this deck only in the side events. Tellar Knights, you need to be a paid actor to play this deck. Unchained, Unchained is... Like, Jesse Cotton is actually going crazy with Unchained. In, like, he always stood with the deck, he never left it, and he's stopping every deck, like, every event with it. I also think that the Unchained is probably the most flexible deck right now. Like, in terms of... Entraps... In, in, like, in terms of a mixed amount of Entraps and Board Breaker, in terms of options in order to break boards, in... Even though the end board does not seem so strong, and Shender is actually the top dog right now. So we have dog and cat on top of the, our tier list. Manadium is an amazing deck. Um, it has some issues going second, but you actually can mitigate those uh, in opposite to Infernoble, that actually it's impossible to mitigate those. Like, there are actually many ways. I'm not going to go deep into those ways uh, in order to mitigate the issues of Manadium, in order to have multiple extenders, and also Ferrid being also a bridge in between the... Um, Ferrid also being a bridge in between the uh, archetypes is actually super amazing for the deck as well. Uh, you can play around like in board breakers with Manadium as well. Uh, you don't necessarily lose to Super Poly. Uh, there are many endbots that don't lose to Super Poly as well. Like you just have to end with an endbot with Changing. Uh, Changing, or how you pronounce it, I don't know, but it's like. Uh, there are also builds that don't lose to Droll because you can actually build your deck in order to respect the Droll. Just don't play reinforcement, just don't play terraforming, just play like other ways to get into your engine rotation and like it's super doable. I think I like the deck way more than Infernoble, actually way more than Infernoble. It's not even close. How Manadium, in my opinion, is better than Infernoble. So definitely, like I would put this in top cooking. Like it's not even close. I think the deck is is good like uh, also after talking with the trif the his theories uh, like the the way that the deck should be approached um i actually believe uh, in manadium um i it actually makes sense for me uh, to see this deck being probably in the future one of the top dogs but like the the deck building makes a solid difference it's not standard manadium it's definitely not standard manadium. You need to build this in a new, complete way. Okay? Like, it's not the manadium that you guys are seeing. It's not the manadium that you guys are talking about right now. It's a complete different shape of deck. But I think manadium is good. Uh, pendulum. Genius. I tested Phantom Knight Horus. Uh, I actually thought that was... Uh, like, I actually thought that was very good. Genu genuinely speaking, I tested... Like, I tested the de this deck and I thought, like... I was like, bro, you can play three sarcophagus and you can put, like, a fuck ton of monsters on the board and... With Trim Seti, three sarcophagus, this deck has to be broken. The issue is, uh, if you don't draw the um, Paraon engine, it's just regular Phantom Knights. And regular Phantom Knights doesn't do anything. 
So it's good. But side events, I actually thought this deck was good, actually. I, I, I genuinely thought this deck was good. Then I reached out to Christian Urena, and I was talking to him about, like, my idea, because sometimes, you know, then he starts laughing. He tells me, Nash, this deck is ass. I was like, no, I will prove you wrong. Gee. Then I tested it. Then I came back. And I was like, gee, you were right. So no, it was never good. Hero. Hero, <laughs> I mean. Hero goes down, down, down. Every time I talk about this deck. Now, in order to perform the full loop of Hero, people are playing the bricks everyone is on the neos stuff right it's like it's good to play through interruptions but every time i talk about hero it's like it's like fucking broken bro it's like super broken it's like super broken fuck it tier one baby so centurion centurion is like uh, centurion is the new deck right like it's something that needs still to be, to be discovered, it's still to be, it still needs to be um, played as, like, the, the, at the full potential and power. And Centurion is interesting. It's interesting, but to be honest, after testing it, uh, it is a very technical deck. Um, the deck seems very straightforward, the combo, like, you memorize the combo and you think you are Gucci, it's not like that. It's not like that, in my opinion. Like, yes, it has some it has some inner intricacy, if that makes sense. I think the Centurion deck has some inner intricacy that like you actually need to know a lot in order to perform well with this deck. The engine in itself felt super mid. Um I think the deck has a chance to perform in Bologna. Do I see right now it as one of the top dogs? Definitely not. I would love to be proved wrong because the deck has some potential, but I still cannot see that light, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put it in top mid right now because I think the deck has some potential, but the engine feels super mid, to be honest. If you mix it with uh, Super Heavy Samurai, if you mix it with Horus, you can also mix it with Bestials and with the um, Archfiend stuff. There is some cooking to be done, but I, can't, I, like, I, I don't think it's horrible. I, I definitely don't think it's horrible. But like the going second seems very hard for the deck, to be honest. I don't see this deck performing well going second, while I see other decks performing way better going second. I, I also think that in Centurion is better than Infernoble. That, that's, 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 okay. Okay, I will stop talking about Infernoble, I'm sorry. Like, that was just a sad discovery for me to, after testing Infernoble, how, Bad it was, holy shit. I don't know, I, I don't know the inner combos by memory. It's just like how the deck feels. Like I think, I think I'm able to recognize when a deck is broken and I need to learn it. And I think I'm able to recognize when a deck feels very bad. Uh, Valmonica, Valmonica, I didn't test it. No one is talking about it. Feels like Pay Doctor. Sky Striker. Uh, there is the new stuff that came out from for Sky Striker. I am not sure. I didn't test the new stuff yet. So for now, I'm gonna put it in the side events. Uh, but like again, please don't roast me for this. You can roast me for Inferno Blade. <laughs> Memento. Uh, Memento. I actually played against Memento. Uh, you summon like the 5k, like when you summon the 5k dude, like it's like it's it's impossible to break the board. <laughs> it's actually stupid. When they go full combo memento and they summon the 5k dude, they have infinity negates. 
<laughs> it's actually stupid. Um, I mean, you have to go an entire route in order to put a skill drain on the board, which makes it bad. So, paid actor. Uh, Horus Bestial Resonator. Okay, so, I actually tested this deck as well. It's just good stuff that makes literally no reason to exist. They only work as a two-card combo. And even as a two-card combo, just pull up a worse Dragon Link board. The follow-up is way better, though, because in terms of follow-up, they have three continues. They have the Sarcophagus, they have the Resonator, and they have the Regained. So in, term of, in terms of follow-up, if you are not able to clear their follow-up, they win the game. If you are able to clear the board, they can never win. Um, the deck is not even mid. And I know, like, this one is easy to play, to be honest. Like, this one, if you if you play the Dragon Link, if you play combo decks, if you play the Horus Engine, if you play the the, um, the Archifin stuff, this one is easy. It, like, in terms of... In terms of intricacy of combo decks. This is not even a combo deck, this is a sort of mid-range. And the follow-up is amazing, because, like, if you survive one turn with the three continues on the board, or if you open a combination of the two, you actually win the game. Um, if you open the, like, bo like the three combinations, like it's impossible to lose. If you open the two combination, the, the end board is mid, maybe you can put a Baron, maybe you can put a Seal. Um, you also play Seifert, and Seifert in this deck does absolutely nothing. Actually, absolutely nothing in this deck. Like, actually, I saw, like, sometimes I had to go safer to add safer just to put safer in the graveyard in order to add Lubellion from my graveyard. The deck is actually just good for the sidelines. I know it did well at the start. Uh, after testing it, it's just a way worse Dragon Link. Uh, Synchro Bestial Runic. Uh, Synchro Bestial Runic did very well in the OCG. I think the Runic stuff... Uh, uh, with the Typhoon, and also the way that in which you can utilize Cartesia and Quem. Um, depends on the flex spot and how many flex spots you can play. Uh, this deck is... Uh, this deck... It, I don't see this deck winning against Unchained. Um, this deck does not have a, an out against Purely. And this deck has a good matchup against Rescue Ace, but that's also why Rescue Ace is at the bottom of the broken decks because it's more, like, it's easier to, to to win against. I honestly tested this too. It did not feel horrible. It did not feel like super bad. Maybe bottom mid. Like, actually, like, no, actually not. I've, yeah, I think just, like, sp the sprite engine, I think it's superior. I'll be real with you. I think the sprite engine is far superior than the... Uh, than the uh, Bestial and Quem and Cartesia right now because of how much you can abuse of SP for multiple tunes. Like, if you are playing the Runic Sprite, in my opinion, like, you play that like, from 2 to 3 SP, even more expensive than the entire deck. It didn't feel good. Like, it, it's not, like, did not feel good at the level of uh, Manadium, Dragon Link, Branded Chimera, Infern... Uh, Rick San Avalon and... That one, uh, don't like it did not feel good, and I think the rune, like I think the sprite engine is superior. It's just way more flexible. It's not even mid to be honest. I think if you have like if you have to play this version of runic, you may as well just play something else. I don't even feel like should be in the side events. I think this deck is a viable option, but the worst so in between the viable options. If that makes sense. Like, you can actually play this deck. But, like, it's it's probably the worst viable option. I mean, we can put it in bottom mid. It's, like, super okay -ish, actually. Like this one, like this. It's probably in between. Yeah, it's just very low mid, to be honest. Horus Chimera? Oh, actually, there were the option of Horus Chimera. Huh. I, I didn't actually see this. So... Definitely better than the Branded Chimera. 
I think Horus Chimera is just way better than the Brander Chimera. Runic Chimera. Uh, Runic Chimera... I dislike it. I very much dislike this version. I tested it for a very long time. I thought that was the goo until my opponent started to ash me. Because you're actually like like the runic the runic chimera version loses even harder to ash. That's actually embarrassing. Like you actually think that you can actually play through ash a lot, but no. It's actually way worse into ash than the like the, the branded Orodos Chimera. And you also have no flex spots. Maybe in the future we can like like develop a better version of the deck. But like this one, this one to be honest can go in the side events. I am not even joking about that. I am not even joking about I actually think this one can actually go in the side events. Dinomorphia, you have to be a paid actor to play this deck. Even though like this deck can actually like okay. Okay, let's talk about Dinomorphia for a second. Dinomorphia is the kind of deck that it's actually so stupid. You can play a top tier deck, super expensive, in which you spent a thousand in order to build. Then you, then 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 you just play against the the, the, the full Chad Dinomorphia player at the table first round of a Wises, and you get smoked. But that's why Dinomorphia are paid actors, because they get paid in order to smoke on you and to feel bad. Drytron. Uh, Drytron, I think I saw... I think I saw... What, what, what was that? On YouTube? The 305th version of Drytron from the Okage. Yeah, Logan. Yeah, Logan. Logan post, like... Logan post the 305th version of Drytron. Bro, like, I... I would love to congratulate you for the commitment. I think you did an amazing job in order uh, to uh, evolve Drytron. Uh, and I think your Drytron deck is uh, fantastic and superb. For the side events, uh, Labyrinth. Uh, Labyrinth is uh, a deck that, I, that I'm testing. I started playing this deck like four days ago after a, a very long break of playing Labyrinth. So I didn't actually, um, I played this deck for the last four days, actually. And I am so bad at playing Labyrinth. I'm actually so bad. Like I look at my replays with the deck and I see like three, four misplays in a row. Like I feel actually so horrible playing this deck. Like I'm so fucking ass at playing this deck. Like, every time I look at my replay and I see the misplays that I do, I feel so bad and horrible that I just want to go in a corner and start crying for hours. And even though I'm horrible, the deck actually performs very well. So, uh, for Labyrinth, I think it's very hard to decide uh, if you want to play the Trap version or the Unchained version of the deck. I think I want to put it in top cooking right now because I'm not sure if it's broken or not. To be honest, I will be real with you. I'm not really sure if it's broken because the consistency is very problematic for this deck. Uh, we can put it in low broken. We can actually put it in low broken, but I am actually not really sure about it. I want to I give it a shot and put it in top cooking because I think the deck has a lot of potential but like but like it's also like in terms of engine in terms of consistency it felt lacking in that sense um the deck like seems very straightforward but then you look at your replays and you find some very stupid mistake and you feel so bad about it, it like it's a while i didn't play labyrinth and also I remember this because, like, it's like yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I was in call with Ryan Yu, right? And he was watching my game. Like, he was supervisioning my game in order to like help me with the deck because when when I when I try to 
get back on my track with, uh, with a deck that I didn't play for a while. I asked one of my friends that actually plays the deck very well in order to help me. He roasted my ass so bad, that's actually unbelievable. Oh my god. Oh my god. He roasted me so bad. But yeah, uh, I will definitely do better in the future with love. I'm just testing it right now. It felt good. That's why it's in the top cooking. I'm not sure if, if it has to be in broken. I will be real with you. I'm actually not sure if it, it has to be in cooking because the consistency had some major problems. Uh, Kastira. Kastira, Kastira, we saw actually it, cons like, it, we actually saw Kastira do well in the side events. Uh, Dark World, Dark World also does well in the side events. And Fire King, to be honest with you, um, I don't think, I don't think the engine is bad right now. I, uh, it's, it's just not enough to keep the piece of the other decks. Um, it might actually do well in Bologna because no one is going to know what the fuck the deck does. So it actually can do... Dude, like, it can, like Fire King can actually do well in Bologna because the, the people are just not going to know what's going on. But right now the engine is definitely not enough. In January though... This deck is gonna be, in my opinion, super good. Uh, in the OCG right now, this deck is undiscussed. Like it's, it's actually tier one. The deck is actually tier one in the OCG. It's not even close. Like the, the other decks are not even close to Fire King in the OCG because they have Bonfire. They have the new Snake Eye. It's actually right now the best deck there. But right now, it's definitely not at the level uh, to do well if people know what it does. Now, if I have to bank about uh, people not knowing what Fire King does, then I can see it being me. But like if I have like if I have to give my personal opinion about the deck after testing it, I think it's just for the side events. Anyways. <laughs> this was so bad. Oh my god. Let me know what you think about this tier list in the comment section below. Please don't be too harsh. I was joking actually about you guys roasting me. Uh, no, actually, you know what? Fight me. Fight me, actually. Run it. Hate me. Say that I'm ass. I don't care. I can take it, but can you take it? That said, I wish you guys a wonderful day and see you <laughs> next time.